Okay, let's talk about using differencing disks in Hyper-V. Now, what a differencing disk is, we'll create a differencing disk and it works with a parent disk. So you have a parent-child relationship. So your parent disk is your primary disk and then the child disk only maintains the differences from the parent disk. And so for the virtual machine, that kind of sees the parent and the child together. And then any changes are just saved to the child disk. Now, why we do this is we can use a parent disk kind of as like a template disk for a series of virtual machines. So we're going to walk through this process here with Windows Server here for a minute. So let's say I needed to deploy four servers. And rather than installing the Windows, op Windows Server operating system four different times, what I can do is I can create like a template computer and I can install or a template virtual machine and I can install uh, Windows Server on that device. And then I can use that as my parent disk for my four child machines. And my four child machines are the ones that will actually be up and running, but I'm only storing the 10 gig or so of the parent uh, or of the Windows operating system once on that parent disk. And so even though I'm running four virtual machines running Windows Server, by using that parent and the differencing disks, I'm actually saving quite a bit of storage space. And that's why we do it. Okay, so let me show you what I've got here. So I'm going to minimize this. I have my Hyper-V and I've created a device here, Server 2022 Parent, and it's currently running, and that's what this is. You see, I've already installed it. Now, I can't, I can't use this disk as my parent disk right now because in this operating system, I have all of my machine-specific information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use sysprep just like if I was going to image the machine. So I'm going to run, and we'll see if it'll find sysprep or if I'm going to have to go find it for it. See if I can. So yeah, I'm going to have to go locate it. So I'm going to go to my C drive, Windows, and scroll down until I find System32, and then scroll down until I find a folder called SysPrep, and then I'm going to run SysPrep here. And so I want this to generalize my system. I want it to enter an out-of-box experience. So when I reboot the system, which I actually won't, it would come up with the out-of-box experience. And when it's done, I want this to shut down. So that's going to generalize my system so that I can then use this as a parent disk and my new devices will come up with this out-of-box experience and I don't have to reinstall the operating system. So I'm going to hit OK. And this is going to sysprep the system and then it's going to turn it off for me. And that way I don't have to worry about the system booting back up and trying to do something else. Trying to, you know, reinitialize all of its machine specific information. Now this should just take a couple of minutes and then the system should uh, shut down. Now, once it does, then I'm almost ready to start using this as a parent for uh, child devices in with a differencing disk. So we'll let this keep working. Now, let me tell you a couple of other things that we're going to do. There we go. System goes down and all right, we are shutting down. Perfect. Now, I don't want any changes to happen to this parent disk again. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and delete the virtual machine. Now, remember with Hyper-V, when I delete the virtual machine, that does not actually delete my VHD. My virtual hard disk stays there. And I can find it by coming here, and I'm going to go to my C drive in my default location. If you haven't moved it, it's going to be in C drive, users, public, public documents. Hyper-V virtual disks. And here's my server 2022 parent. And you'll see that is about 12 gigabytes. So the other thing I'm going to do to this, so by deleting the virtual machine, that makes it so people won't see it's there. But the other thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to make this read only. So I'm going to go to properties and mark that as read only. 
And that way we won't be able to make any changes to this. That is now a read-only file. Okay, so I've created my machine. I've sysprep or I've installed it. I've sysprepped it. And then I deleted it when I was done with it. And I made the parent. And notice we identified this to hopefully make it easy to see this as parent. We made it read-only. <clears throat> So now I'm ready to create a new virtual machine for a child. Now, if I create the virtual machine first, what's going to happen is that's it's going to try to create a uh, its own virtual hard disk for me. And I don't want that. So when I go to create it, I could say, give me a new hard drive later, or I can create my hard drive now. So I'm going to create my hard drive now. I'm going to go to new hard disk and... VHDX, and this is going to be a differencing disk. And this is where I associate it with the parent. So this is going to be my, let's call this child one disk. And then I'm going to browse. Hold on. I'm not going to browse. I'm at the right spot. So this is where it's going to save it. So I'm fine with that. And here's where I specify the one that I want to be the parent. Now I'm going to browse. And I'm going to choose my server 2022 parent. And next. And finish. Now that creates my virtual hard disk for me. So now I'll create my new virtual machine. And this is going to be server 2022. child one and then gen one is fine we're going to go ahead and set the memory couple of things to keep in mind by the way when doing this is your parent and your child need to be the same format so i can't use a vhd uh, parent with the vhdx child uh, let me go ahead and connect it to my internal switch and then here's where i can uh, create a virtual disk, and this will create a new one. That's not what I want. I can use the one I just created, or if I start the cre creating the virtual machine without creating the virtual hard disk, I can just attach a virtual hard disk later um, and then go and create my VHD, then come back, edit the machine, and attach it later. But because I created it beforehand, I'm going to browse, and I'm going to find my child one disk right here. And next, and finish. Now, when I bring this up, what should happen, let me go ahead and start it up, is it's using that parent disk, it should come up with the operating system already loaded, and it should take me to that out-of-box experience, because that's what I had uh, when I sys prepped it. That's what I told it to come back to. So, starting services, we'll see if this does what we want it to do. We'll take a minute for it to finish getting everything ready for its out-of-box experience. Now, while this is coming up, I want to go ahead and show you something. You can see that this operating system is already installed, right? Hey, there we go, out-of-box experience. We'll go and blow through this real quick. Yep, we're going to accept the terms. Let's go ahead and set our password. And remember, this is just the OBE, out-of-box experience. We didn't go through and create everything. And hey, we are up. Let me go ahead and do an enhanced session just because we can. And then I'm going to log in. And our server is up. Now, I want to show you something here. We're going to go back to our location where our hard disks are stored. So I'm going to go to my C drive, users, public, public documents, Hyper-V, virtual hard disks. Now, we have this machine, this virtual machine is running off of that child disk, right? But if we look, that child disk is actually only about 4 meg. That's because this is only storing what's different between it and the parent disk. So let's add it four more children, child two, child three, child four. Then I'm storing basically 16 megabytes, 
until I start adding roles, features, and doing other things in the system. But I'm doing roughly 16 megabytes of storage, plus my 12 gigabytes is stored once, rather than storing that 12 gigabytes four times. And that's why we like differencing disks because it really cuts down on our storage space. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and explains how we can use a differencing disk to save on our storage space if we're deploying a bunch of virtual machines with the same operating system.